What is good? We're back, and we got the snoo back in the house for some post dra- or post combine chatter. What up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, and I'm, I'm happy, Casey, because last time we talked about these guys like Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, we, we were talking about how athletic these guys are, and we, we got that confirmation, elite athletes, and now we're going to kind of compare their values to last year's class, which, like you said before, everyone says it's bad, but then it ends up being a really good class. It's probably going to be the same thing this year. Yeah, so in this version of the video, we got we got another one coming for you, so be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz so you don't miss anything. We're going to take the 23 class, put it up against the 24 class, and figure out which one reigns supreme right now, because like you alluded to, we're at the point of the cycle where this class now sucks, uh, which there was plenty of people saying this 23 class sucked too, but you got like 12 or 13 of like the top... 40 guys already kind of in that area as far as at least the ADP that we're seeing right now for the FF dynasty. So, um, Snoog first question, we'll start at the kind of the top here with guys we got, you taking Caleb or are you taking Stroud 23 verse 24 mystery box or I'm taking CJ all day. Yeah. And I actually have CJ as my dynasty QB three right now. I think he is, just on an extreme level and he's playing in an elite offense where they're building around him. And we saw the best rookie quarterback season ever last year. He won a playoff game. He was on pace for the most yards in the league. Like he, he's just lit up the room. And I don't think Caleb can't get to that level, but Shroud's already on that level and he's already in a great situation where they're building around him. They have trust in him. They just brought in Joe Mix and the run game's going to finally be good this year. They were down to like backup linemen last year at one point. He yeah. was still in the ball like 25 times a game and throwing 450 yards. That's the thing with Stroud too. I, his passing attempts were like, I don't even think he broke 500. And he still threw for that many passing yards a game. So it was highly efficient passing volume for that Texans offense. And he was the main lead of that. Yeah, and they're, they're returning everybody and, and line getting healthier and um, adding some good pieces on defense. Um, we'll see if they maybe even add one more um, potential problem in the wide receiving core there. But, you know, Mechie getting healthy, getting back could potentially add a little depth there. Yep. I think Robert Woods is still on the squad. Uh, yeah, they brought Will Brown back and Schultz and, back. In the right. Contract so, too, so they're running it back. You like to see that. Um, I, I, I would tend to agree with you. I'll, I'll take Stroud in the known here. Um, I love Caleb Williams. I'm not a Caleb Williams hater and none, none of that is coming. None of the picking over the other one is coming because I have any ill will towards anything off the field of what people think about Caleb Williams. I think all that stuff is just noise and nonsense. Absolutely. Um, I think it's prospect fatigue at this point with him. He's awesome. It's hard for me not to take that mystery box because that mystery box looks like a whole lot of fun with Caleb Williams, but I think I'm with you here, Stroud. So let's, let's, Go down a little bit, a little bit more of an unknown. Let's go Anthony Richardson or Caleb Williams. I'm going to go with Caleb here. I, I think you could argue that it's decently close, but I think Caleb is just like people put the generational name on him. He's damn near close to that, and he's going to go into a, one of the best situations a 101 quarterback has ever been put into. The Bears are already locked and loaded. They were good last year with Fields when Fields was healthy. Caleb's another level of than Fields is, and DJ Moore is there. Cole Komet, they just brought in Gerald Everett, added DeAndre Swift, and they still have pick nine. nine. All their picks in 25, you can't go wrong there. Like They're building something. Chicago's turning things around. Caleb's going to be the main guy there. So I think Shroud and Caleb would be in a tier together, and then you could kind of talk Richardson in that next tier at, ahead of everyone else in the class. Yeah, I would I would like to say I'm taking Richardson, but I know time and time again in, in the mm-hmm. startup mocks that I'm doing, I've proved out that I pretty much take Caleb yeah. um, over Richardson. I, I love what Richardson can be. We haven't even gotten to really yeah. see it. So there is a little bit of a mystery box with him. But what we did see in a few quarters, the a mass yeah. amount of points that he was able to amass very quickly is very, very intriguing. Um, yeah. And the Colts seem to be on a good uh, trajectory as well, much like the Bears. Exactly. What's interesting, you bring up the Bears and, and where they're going. Like, they got this huge predicament right now of what to do with this 1-1 one, one in fields. And it's like, if they didn't do a great job last year of moving things around, they wouldn't even be in this predicament because they didn't earn the 1-1. One, one. Exactly. So, you know, it's just it's a very interesting conundrum they've got themselves in here. 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and like you mentioned with Richardson, he he's an absolute monster. He could break fantasy football if he hits his ceiling. And there's no team he could be on that's better for that ceiling to be reached. And with QB guru Shane Steichen mm-hmm. there, he's just a mastermind. They brought Pittman back on a big deal. Josh Downs, Alec Pierce, they have pick 15. I'm seeing Bowers get Bowers. mocked there. Like Richardson has all the arm talent in the world. He could throw the ball 70 yards. He could run the ball 10 times to a game. He's literally what people want like from like a new prototype of Cam Newton. Will he be Cam Newton? That's very hard to say because he was an MVP winner, but I think he'll give us at least a few really good fantasy football years from that perspective. Yeah, I agree, but I, th- I think I'm still – I've proven out to myself that I'm going that – I, that, w- that I would take – Caleb Williams yeah, um, throughout all the mocks that I've done. So, yep. all right, we can get off um, the first QB, at least for now. Let's go to Marv. We'll go to Marvin Harrison Jr. here. Um, would you rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. or would you trade that pick to get B. John Robinson or vice versa? What, what do you think here? I was looking at this one before the show, and I was like, I don't know. Like, this is so hard because I have B. John as the dynasty RB1. Sure. And I think – there's three running backs in this current landscape and dynasty that cannot be affected by the 2025 class at all. And that's an absolutely loaded running back class. Mm-hmm. Gibbs, Bijan, and Brees Hall. I think those three are safe. There's no way they bring in anybody, maybe a vet on a cheap deal if if anything happened, like Demont like got injured really bad or something. But anybody after that, I JT I'd throw in that mix too after yeah, the massive contract. He, he's on that elite level, but like CMC's getting up there in age. I could see them bringing someone in like next, you know, next year. So it, it's tough. The landscape's tough. So I think like positional value Bijan wins out. But I think like the way Dynasty is and how the market's so reactionary to these rookie wide receivers. If Marv goes forward to the Cardinals and puts up 1,200 yards, he's going to be talked. The people are going to be throwing him in the Justin Jefferson tier. Like that's just how people are. Very reactionary. CD Lamb held his value putting up eight, not 900 yards as a rookie next year. I'll put up like a thousand, didn't hit that next ceiling like everyone wanted. And everyone was basically still saying he's like wide receiver three. And yeah. Nine. He, he maybe had dropped down to five or six for some people, but then bang, exactly. right. We're right back so at it. So. That value so well. So yeah. I think it's like roll a dice type of move, but if yeah. it's like, if your team say it's 0.25 per carry, give me Bijan all day. Yeah. If it's full PPR regular and in the league's very crazy on wideouts, then I would lean Marv because that's what matters too is how how does your league react to the positions? Like, is it start three wideouts? Can you start up to five wideouts with two flexes? So I think team needs and kind of league settings matters too. Yeah, I think that's a, some really good points in there. Positional value scarcity of Bijan mm-hmm. makes me want to lean that way. But the current currency that reigns supreme yeah. right now is young, talented wide receivers in dynasty. And that's what everybody wants. And, you know, keeps you a little more fluid and moving around. Um, Bijan brought in Kirk Cousins too. Right. So it that's, makes me even more optimistic for Bijan, but the, the new coach defensive minded, like that, that usually leans towards running the football and getting the play action going. And, and they brought in a ton of weapons. So he could score like 15 touchdowns if he hits his ceiling and he could have like 70 catches. So it's so tough, but I like, I like the three wide receiver kind of caveat. Mm-hmm. And that that's the case yeah. I could see trending towards Marv a little bit, but I'm going to stick with Bijan because he almost has a little mystery box to him too, of what can be. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we saw the, how good your good was from him at points. Um, so I'm going to stick with Bijan there. Um, all right, let's let's keep it moving. Let's go down to – you want to go quarterbacks next or you want to go to neighbors? Let's get through the quarterbacks, yeah. Let's, okay. Let's talk quarterbacks. How do you have – you got Drake May or Daniels first? I don't even have an answer on that yet. Okay, I'm, fair I'm enough. I'm like so hesitant on it, but just based off kind of what I know and like what the value are and what they offer – I think May is going to be a better value in drafts. It seems like Daniels is pretty pinned, and I see a lot of people putting him over Marv at 102. So I think May is going to probably be the guy that slips down a little bit and ends up being a better value. But Yeah, so all right, we I think we can kind of maybe sort of put those guys together a little bit here um, hmm, and kind of talk about it. So let's let's call that – let's let's – Let's say Puka Nakua or the two, one of the two 
quarterbacks in May or, or Daniels, whichever you would prefer, I guess. So we'll, we'll call them the same right now, sort of tiered up. Yeah, I, I'm a big rookie wide receiver guy. Like, and Puka literally set like every record. He had the best rookie season ever. I, I would lean Puka. I think there's just so much risk with every rookie quarterback in general, especially the ones going to the Patriots and maybe the Commanders. <laughs> yeah. It's not very appealing. Like if Bryce Young couldn't get it done on the Panthers, like Drake May or Jane Daniels aren't probably getting it done on the Patriots, right? So it's like, I think that matters. And like we saw Zach Wilson just set out to fail in the Jets and what they offered him early on in his career. We saw what happened with Trey Lance, who went to a phenomenal situation and still couldn't get to that next level. We've seen it with so many of these guys, Fields, Mac Jones, like these guys were first rounders, showed really good glimpses from time to time. It doesn't even matter like if the quarterback's good or not. Like What matters is what the team does to build around them, how the scheme is, does the scheme fit their strengths. And it doesn't always work out like that. Like we were talking before the show, these players are good, but if Drake May goes to a system where he's throwing a Kendrick Bourne and Pop Douglas, and that's his weapons, he's probably going to throw a lot of picks and get sloppy and play hero ball. And that's what builds the bad habits like Zach Wilson. So Mac Jones. It, it's tough. The upside, yeah, the upside's there for Daniels and Drake May for sure. But I mean, Puka Nakua, we know what he is. He's tied to Stafford, he's in McVay's system. He's going to be a wide receiver one. He's a top eight, top nine dynasty player at the position. So it's just it's just value. And it's not like Drake May or Jane Daniels can be the next Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes where it's like if you lose the trade, like you're not going to lose it that bad. Like I think Daniels and May could maybe get into that like QB 8 to 12, 15 range. If they do that, it's like, all right, I got a wide receiver one. I can't be mad about it. So yeah. I'd leave yeah. Booga there. I like the – the leaning towards a little bit safeness of the wide receiver who's already kind of proven. So that's, I like that, I, that idea there and that, that coming in the bust rate of, of first round quarterbacks is really high. I will say um, I do kind of like at least the lens that it seems that, that the Patriots are viewing themselves at where you sign Brissett and you can go in and have a bridge at least for a year. So you don't have to put these guys in that scenario. Yes. Yes. Um, I think is fantastic. Maybe and maybe they won't. Maybe they'll they'll put him in there anyway. But like at least you have the option of saying you got a veteran there, and we and we can't. I don't think we can. At least we can't put the Commanders and the Patriots in the same bucket that they've been in because we have had some change at least. So mm -hmm. it's not the same old. So there's some hope there that maybe they do some things uh, potentially a little different now. Mm -hmm. The commanders only have Mariota there, so I don't view that as a bridge. I think Brissett is definitely a bridge that isn't going to have your team quitting on you in week two because you're starting yeah. them, you know? Yeah, uh, I agree. And the more and more I think about it, the more I feel like Daniels to the commanders is a lock, which I love that situation with Kingsbury, with Mariota there is the veteran mobile guy, the play action guy, brought in Eckler. They have Terry. Like they have weapons there, and they brought a ton of players in in free agency. So the more and more like – I. I kind of process everything and I think about the commander situation, the more and more I like Jaden Daniels, because I think he is that guy there. And I think he'll be a good fit there. I just think that he's already priced so high that it's like, why am I going to take him QB 12 when I can just trade him for like a Dak or a Trevor Lawrence or a Brock Purdy, get a plus or maybe add a little bit to get one of those guys and just get a guy that I know is going to give me 4,000 yards and like 25 to 30 passing touchdowns. It's tough. It's like, it comes down to like, are you here to take a risk or do you want to just like lock in yourself to, to hopefully win some money? So I, I like to contend. I like to kind of go all in and, and get these veteran contenders. And I like to go all in on quarterbacks. Like I like to have like the Stroud and the Burrow pair, the Stroud and the Herbert pair, just to know that I don't have to worry about that position for the next five to six years. It gets a little tricky when you get to like the Anthony Richardson's, the Justin Fields, those type of like elite rushing quarterbacks that, can get injured and they can fall down the totem pole pretty quickly. So, yeah, I, 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 I can feel that. Um, seems like 23 is having a nice little run here for us. Not, not a whole lot of 24 success so far. So let's move on to neighbors and let's throw Jameer Gibbs at him. What do you think there? You going Gibbs or neighbors? This is so close. I, I'm going to go Gibbs though. And I love Malik neighbors. I think he's phenomenal. But there's a chance he's a giant. There's a chance he's a Titan. <laughs> there's a chance he's one of these teams, right? It's it's not set in stone that he's going to be a Cardinal or a Charger. 
there's a good chance he ends up being a giant with with Daniel Jones there. So it's it's definitely tough. If he's a Charger, I would tell you today that I'd take him over Gibbs. But like I said, there's three, four running backs that you can say are going to be the starters that are going to get the workload for the next three to four years. Gibbs, Bijan, Brees Hall, JT, they're so valuable in Dynasty. And Gibbs has that crazy upside with the receiving. He could hit 80 receptions in, in any given time. He was, I think he scored double digit touchdowns last year, almost had a thousand yards or, or rushing. Like everyone thought he wouldn't get the goal line work and he did. So, like, Ben Johnson loves Jameer Gibbs. He loves the weapon that he provides and his versatility in space. So, I think Jameer Gibbs, I'm, I'm a big Jameer Gibbs guy. And if I didn't move rooms, I'd have that signed jersey hanging up behind me. <laughs> so, I am a little biased with Gibbs. But if Neighbors was a charger, I would tell you today that I'd take Neighbors. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. I like the the point I would really zero in on is that Ben Johnson stayed around. Yep. Makes me feel a whole lot more comfortable with Gibbs moving forward. Now, is it one more year and, and we're out, or is it end up being, you know, two, three more years with Ben Johnson yeah. until he finds the best spot ever, or maybe he never even leaves? I have no idea what's going to happen there, but I think you're right. I think neighbors to the right spot could could make me lean another way, but right now with the unknown and yeah. and. You know, we have no idea what Jim Harbaugh is going to do at pick five. He could take an offensive lineman there, you know, and just yeah. be like, this is what we're, you know, this is what we're doing. We're building the trenches. This is my identity. Uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to play defense and run the ball. Uh, we're going to throw Keenan Allen out there. He's going to be, you know, my, my, my crab tree. We, we talked about this with, uh, I think JB the other day, maybe, or maybe it was on the Patreon with the free agent frenzy. Not sure. Um, but he doesn't need, he doesn't need a whole lot of uh, receiving, uh, you know, explosiveness craziness he can he, you know he I, he'll roll with josh palmer and keenan allen out there he doesn't yeah. care you know and quentin johnston um maybe but, brock bowers and and potentially maybe brock bowers um, that'd be a good pick for them right um so yeah i i, I tend to agree I'm, I'm going 23 again i'm sticking with gibbs i think some people i think that might be the biggest problem maybe people might have with this so far i think some i think everyone's going to go neighbors there and be like oh, i gotta take neighbors but I, i'm I'm, yeah, stick with- I, I, I'm like pretty split on it i mean yeah I think I just lean the the elite running back that's tied to a very, very good, like a Super Bowl caliber offense for the next potential four or five years on that on that first round, fifth year option. So it golf's a check down machine. He had like 50 receptions, missed two games. Like Gibbs would, would have literally been a top five running back last year if he didn't miss those like two and a half games or whatever. And they kind he of they took a minute to like, mix him in, you know, too. Even yeah. Though. Even in the beginning it took of the season, them a while to get him going. Right. Like you could tell, they wanted to build the truck. Like he is when he hits, and when they finally give him, like even if it's a 60 40 split with Dave Montgomery, he's going to put up 300 plus fantasy points. So, can't go right. wrong. let's let's throw the tight end dynasty tight end one. I think for most people, Sam Laporta or Roma Dunze, tight end premium 1.5. Let's let's do a more fun one, okay. Let's do Bowers versus Sam Laporta. Okay, sure. and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give us our first 2024 pick with Brock Bowers. Okay, really? I think he is the best tight end that I've ever watched coming out of college. And granted, I am young, so people that are older <laughs> and that say Vernon Davis, you didn't watch him, you didn't watch it. Okay, I didn't, but for what Not I've seen, yard. <laughs> Brock Bowers is just an absolute monster. I, I've been tweeting about him a lot for a while. He, he was the best player on the best team in college football for three years straight. Like he was their best offensive player. You got guys like Adonai Mitchell, Lad McConkey, Jermaine Burton, George Pickens. Like these guys were all around and, and playing on this team. Brock Bowers had 12 touchdowns as a true freshman, led Georgia every year. Like he, he was a monster and like he was their offense. He is so versatile. I, I tweeted the literally, I think it was today, like, it's not often you see a tight end split split out wide down in the red zone to get a goal line fade. Like when do you ever see a tight end do that <laughs> yeah. in college? Maybe Gronk or like maybe like a Kelsey doesn't even get that type of treatment. Like Brock Bowers was split out wide one on one with a safety and they just lined up a, a go ball with like 10 yards to spare. And he just mosses them. Like he is so good. He's so physical. He's an elite athlete. I know he didn't test at the pro day of the combine, but I know he had that. In- I think it was an ankle injury that was like a pretty bad injury whenever he had it. And it leads to hamstring injuries. And he got a hamstring injury probably from rushing back to play. And I, and I follow some sports doctors that were saying that's why that happened. And it's not anything to be super worried about. Like he's going to have plenty of time to recover and strengthen that up. But 
that's why he didn't test. I think if he did test, he probably would have ran in the four fours and he probably would have jumped through the roof. So like, he's just such a good athlete and I don't see a scenario. He, I got, if he makes it out of the top 10, someone's getting the steal of the draft, in my opinion. Like, I think you could see the chargers take him at five. You could possibly see giants take him six. Like you could, see, if he falls, maybe Bengals 18, you could see him Colts 15. Like you could see him going to any of these spots. And and I think he's just so good, man. Jets at 10 with A-Rod and Garrett Wilson. Like that power run heavy, like play action offense, he'd be phenomenal. And Colts so, at 15. He's like any of these spots. And it's nothing against Sam Laporta. I just think Brock Bowers has a completely different ceiling than Sam Laporta does. And I think Sam Laporta is like very good. And I think his offense helps him a lot from a fantasy perspective, like, do I think, like, I don't know if Sam Laporte is like dynasty tight end one talented, you know what I mean? Even though he is the, is the one right now. I don't know if he has that like elite skill set where he's just the most dominant tight end in the league. And he's like that Kelsey or he's that Gronk, but I think Brock Bowers can't be. Uh, Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to stick with Laporta. I, I feel that. I, I, I think most people would. And, and Laporta is the tight end one for a lot of people. He's my two. I have them in the same tier. But even before landing spot, I'm just putting Bowers there. If he goes to like Denver, then maybe I'll adjust. But as yeah. of now, yeah, he's my one. I'm just so confident that he's going to the Chargers at five with uh, Roman <laughs> and Harbaugh there. I think he's going to be there, Vernon Davis again. So. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. Harkening back to uh, what what Harbaugh does and and Roman does, I think that's yeah, that's a nice fit. I love it. Um, all right, so is there are there any two of these <clears throat> or any one of these lower tiered like Tank or and I don't know how you guys how you have these guys ranked, but Tank or Flowers or um, Addison that you would take over Roma Dunze? I would take Tank over all of them, but I take Rome over Tank. Yeah. I think Rome is proved at the combine that he's an elite athlete, and a lot of people didn't think he was. I think he has a very versatile skill set, and he's pretty locked and loaded, a top 10 draft pick. I could see him nine to the Bears to compliment DJ Moore. I could see him six to the Giants. He's one of those that I don't care where he goes. I'm still just going to be in on him. Even if he goes to the Giants, Like in my mind, I'm like, all right, he's going to get 150 targets. Maybe he's like a Garrett Wilson where he's just so nasty where everyone keeps his value high because they're like, next year. Next year, he'll be good. Next year, he'll be good. Right. Oh, he'll get the quarterback next year, like Drake London. So I, I think you've got to be all in on Roman Dunze. And, and Tank with CJ Stroud is phenomenal. I'd take Tank second out of that group, but I think Rome, like you can't deny the draft capital. You can't deny the versatility. And he's not 5'9", 165, and has a broken leg. So it's kind of <laughs> a lot easier to take Rome over him. Yeah. Um, obviously, we had, you know, JSN didn't didn't have quite the season that we wanted him to have. Now they've re-signed Lockett to two years, basically kind of seeing sure enough that he'll most likely be there for at least two more years. We don't know where the skill set will be at that point. Um, but where is there is there a, a player that if you were on the board in this first round after we because now we're out of the one seven range, it gets a little more, you know, we can confidently pretty much say that we can run through those top seven and they are what they are, whether whether where you have Rome or Bowers are irrelevant. But now we're in a little bit different territory here. Is there any of these first round picks that you would be willing to, um, you know, I hate to say roll the dice on JSN because I just I, well, I really don't understand how he goes from being, you know, the top notch evaluated talent. And obviously there's some context of why potentially things and he got drafted to a spot that you kind of knew that you might have to wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so what do you what what do you is there a is it Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin? Um, you know, I don't know if you have Lad up there yet. Yeah, well, we will figure out on the next show. Um, yeah. Is there a is there a spot at the for in the first super flex tight end premium that you would say, hey, I'm okay with r- trading this for the 23 wide receiver one? Yeah, I, I think you could definitely argue Brian Thomas Jr. and Xavier Worthy. I mean, they were elite athletes. They're probably going to go higher than JSN went in the draft. I mean. It was a weak wide receiver class last year, and there was four guys that went like early twenties. I think the position's even more in value this year. There, there was a weak free agent class. A lot of like Calvin Ridley, the Titans. Like, what was that? So now there's a lot more teams. Like the Steelers need a wideout at twenty. Cowboys need a number two. Chiefs do. Like Bills do. 
there's so many of these teams that need like that bona fide wide receiver too, with how valuable the positions become. So I think Worthy and Brian Thomas, like I could see Thomas 17 to the Jags now that Ridley's gone. I could see Worthy there. I could see Thomas or Worthy to the Bengals at 18. I could see one of them going to the Colts. Like there's just so many opportunities there for these guys. And they were elite athletes, like four three three at 210 pounds and six foot three. And Worthy broke the record. So I think you could probably throw them all in a tier. But I think the re-roll with the possible like good landing spot that's going to lead to instant production is probably where I would go personally. Just because like JS, it could take another year, right? It could be one of those scenarios where he puts up 800 yards and then it's like, oh, is he going to do it next year? What's he going to do next year? So if we were evaluating these guys as prospects, it would be a lot different. I, could, they, I would at least have JSN ahead of all of them or that he'd be like four mm-hmm. right, right there with Thomas or maybe above Thomas. So it's tough, but I mean, yeah, he's on Seattle. Owl, maybe now that Owl's there can can unlock him and I don't think Gino, Gino Smith's the answer I think he stinks and I think he's holding that offense back and JSN so I'm curious where you stand on that like who was your wide receiver for in this class like after the obviously like neighbors of Dunze and Marv if that's your three is there a four and a five that you take over JSN I think I, I like it, I like what you said in in the idea that we got a, a, a new re-roll and a, and a bingo card that the chances of elevating, you know, stock is, mm-hmm. is better. So I, you know, with taking almost any of those guys, jumble them up, whoever. Um, Cause I think a lot of those guys are going to end up getting first round capital, just like yep. you said. Um, so I understand that part. And I, I think that's way the most dynasty players are going to lean. I'm going to practice the patience here. I think I would just, I, I'll give you the one eight for, you know, maybe if maybe if JJ McCarthy goes top ten, yeah, that, that was what like, I was gonna say. Yeah, once we get quarterbacks kind of known a little bit more, and we push them Rome, down, right? Like what's it that? could be Rome, it could be Bowers, right? If, if JJ goes top ten, right? So, right, that one away has value, right? So we could shift down a little, so that would be the caveat for me. But I'm I'm taking I'm steadfast on my evaluation. He broke his wrist. He went into a spot that was, he didn't even really have a preseason, went into a spot that had two guys and, and Gino and, and a system that again, we can't really judge what's moving forward with the, with, with Seattle, because that was what Pete Carroll did. Wasn't great for three wide receivers. So now we're bringing, you know, grub in and a new, new head coach. Um, and, potentially even a, a drafted quarterback here. You know, I know they just traded for Sam Howell, but like, I think also the league is probably putting a little bit more of a premium on a developmental good backup, which I think Sam, Sam Howell can give you both of those things, right? He can, you can develop him in your system. And if you got to stick him in and he's not behind the commanders who were abandoning runs and just throwing it all over the place. And, you know, just the commanders of old, um, you know, I think Sam Howell had some, some decent spots last year where it was like, Hey, he, there, the, the, there's parts and pieces here. It's just the system and everything around him failed. So the efficiency yeah. numbers and all those other things looked really bad. Now I do think Gino is going to play out this year for them unless something happens. Um, but I'm going to stick, I'm going to stick with the, with JSN and, like and, and, and my evaluation from last year, not a lot of, I think patience is, is not a, not a skill practice by very many people. And it's like, well, he didn't break out his first year, so he must stink. And I'm like, I don't think that really like if you watched him on the field, what you as nasty. the season went on and, and especially once he was kind of moved out of the slot a little more operating outside, sometimes you got to see some of those things. There was a couple of drop touchdowns at the end of the season. Um, so I think I think it's still there. So I, I think I would move any of those picks there um, for for 23 verse 24. Uh, I got it. Right, let's do let's do one more. We can maybe time together. I want to get Bryce Young and. Uh, Will Levis, I think, is now a little interesting. The direction that the um, Tennessee Titans are moving in here. Would you trade your one twelve for either one of those quarterbacks? Yeah, I would for Bryce Young. I would. Yeah, you like you I, like where they're going. Yeah, I think. I don't even necessarily think that the. I think the Panthers team sucked, and I think their situation was terrible, but. I think Bryce could have done better. And I think that it was more so like a situation where the scheme and the coaching was just horrible rather than like the team and the like, 
he started to put things together and put together some good drives. And I, I liked what I saw from him from time to time. I definitely would take him over Levis just personally. I think Bryce is still a good player. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be a guy that throws for 40 touchdowns and 5,000 yards? No, he'll probably never do that or even come close to that. But I think he would be that 4,000 yard passer and 20, 25 touchdowns. Maybe like, like how Russ was kind of on his downfall a little bit. Maybe hit peak Russ if they build the right offense around him. But that's like an absolute ceiling. I think he can just be a, a very good QB2 in fantasy. And I think with Deontay Johnson coming in, they, they're going to probably take a lad McConkie or an Adonai Mitchell or Troy, Troy Franklin with that early second. And they're going to give him weapons. They made a ton of signings on the offensive line. Yeah. They made a ton of signings on defense. Like They made some, some splashes. So I think this year is the year to kind of see where Bryce is going to be in the NFL and how he's going to, react and deal with the new weapons and the new coaching staff i mean this guy saved baker's career made baker look great this guy's like another qb guru that's what they're saying yeah. so made you know I'm, I'm impressed with what he's kind of the way he carries himself it seems like he's very positive and he's going to come in and he has faith in bryce young so that's what matters right if your coaching staff doesn't believe in you then you're likely going to get traded like sam howell did yeah i, I like all that i i agree with I like the direction that they went in. They addressed the obvious needs right away and spent money on it. And and you, like you said, Canales had Baker resurrected before that. He got Gino paid. Yep. Um, so, you know, Bryce, I think everything looking up, there was seemed to be dysfunction immediately last year mm -hmm. uh, in the in house divided with, with the Panthers. So we're yeah. kind of moving forward. It seems like, like you said, I like, I like everything you said there. Um, I would I would tend to have to agree with you that I would I would dive back into that 112 with the glimmer of hope of of Bryce here because I just feels like the you know I, I hate to give up the chance that maybe a lad McConkey for myself or Trey Benson or uh, you know I'm a big I like Michael Penix out of all these court the, the second tier quarterback so I, I want Michael Penix on my team I you know if Seattle drafts Michael Penix I'm gonna be super excited yeah um, so, you know, I'd love to I'd love to to take Michael Penix. And maybe if I was faced with that decision, I might even lean Penix if, as long as Penix gets the capital. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd probably still keep Penix. But other than that, I think I would be down to to re. To take my my 24 112, because I'm probably already a pretty good team and I can take a risk on potential buying low and Bryce Young, because, you know, maybe the person who has him is just. One mm -hmm. of the impatient owners who's just like, oh, he sucks. I didn't, <laughs> yeah. I didn't watch any games, and I don't know anything about him. I don't know, you know, but he sucks because uh, yeah. he didn't break out. So, I think that I think right. you could probably argue Levis in there too. I mean, I'm not a Levis guy by any means, but like strong arm gunslinger. If he puts it together, Calvin Ridley, D Hop, Traylon Burks, yeah. Tajay Spears, Tony Pollard. They they made some moves on the offensive side and defensive side. So you could argue that if if Levis hits his ceiling. He could be like a, I think like Levis' ceiling is like in that Derek Carr type of mold, just like gunslinger, makes stupid mistakes, but he ends up being a starter for a while for some reason. So, yeah, that's kind of my Levis ceiling. <laughs> he'll win you those crazy games like he did yeah. last year against Miami. And uh, yeah, like, exactly. So, but I like, I like what they did. And I only brought him up because of kind of where they're going. Just again, the theme mm -hmm. of my, of this podcast is apparently you can't judge the book by the cover. We got the Tennessee Titans. Callahan, three wide receivers. We're bringing in two pass catching backs. We're we signed Calvin Ridley. We got D Hop. We got uh, well, they're gonna throw a ton, <laughs> right? Two pass so, catching. You know, why else are you bringing in Pollard? I you know, and you've made you drafted a first line first round offensive lineman last year. You brought in Cushenberry as your center this year. And I think you're probably going to spend that top 10 pick on another offensive lineman think, this year. I think they could land Joe all. And if they do, I, I'm not a Levis guy, like I said, and he's actually on my dynasty sales list. Cause I thought you could capitalize on this mm -hmm. hype and try to get like a, maybe you can turn that into like a Bryce young, or you can turn it into maybe like a add on him and get a Trevor Lawrence add on him and get a, like a Purdy type of quarterback or add on him. And maybe you can get Dak yeah. or you could get Goff plus or like a Stafford plus. So, those are the type of moves that I would look to do for Levis. But like if he, if he's a QB 20 to 25 value, like I'll take shots on him. Yeah. No, I, I, 
I tend to agree for the most part. I'll take shots on the on the everyone who everybody's quitting who I think is decent at this point. Um, mm-hmm. Especially if I'm one of the better teams in the league, and I'm I could be a little more, you know, take some chances on some risk because I I feel good about where my team is and how I'm built. So yeah. that's what I view that that back half of the draft as far as if if you're contextualizing that the, the winner of the league has one of those picks, then I don't think it's a terrible move. So mm-hmm. uh, any, any other players that you wanted a quick pit up against each other or, or are you ready to get out of here? I would like to, yeah. Let's yeah. talk a little bit maybe about a chain and you could probably, who, who could we argue him against in the 20? I think a chain would go over every other, 24 RB. I don't think there's any 2024 no. RB that could uh, over or surpass a chain in value. And no, there's no landing spot better than what a chain got, but I think you could probably argue him against like, I think I would take him over like a Brian Thomas or a Xavier worthy, just, just from a pure ceiling perspective and just what he can do in that Dolphins offense. So yeah. I think he's even up there as well. But I think once you get to like the Thomas, Adnai Mitchell, Xavier worthy, Troy Franklin, like I think, I would take those guys. Like I would take Thomas Worthy, and probably I would take Thomas and Worthy over guys like probably Jordan Addison, Jaden Reed, like maybe Rashi Rice. It's tough, but I just think there's way more ceiling there, and I, I don't like Minnesota's situation at all. Like Sam Darnold, like what's Jordan Addison gonna do? Is the, I think the third option, and, and it stinks because I like Jordan Addison, but sometimes the hard truth is what you need, and <laughs> yeah. I think. The 24 wide receiver class, a lot of them got good landing spots, but I don't think a lot of these wideouts are like star caliber players like the market wants to say. Like Rashi Rice, like what if they bring in T. Higgins? What is Rashi Rice? Like he's probably like a wide receiver too. Hmm. So it it's tough. I mean, like you got Rice, you got Reed, you got Jordan Addison, you got JSN, you got Flowers, Flowers Tank Dell, you got Puka, like there's a lot of good names there that that had good year ones. Even Don Tavian Wicks had a pretty good year one. So it's like they, they produced. Now is the time that if you're not confident in those players, you can turn them into maybe try to get Brian Thomas Jr. before the draft or maybe get like a Devontae Smith and trade up for it. So I think kind of tearing off those guys could be a good move. I, I, I think they're, they're good players. I, there's none that I don't like, but there's some that I don't like their value right now currently. And I think – Addison's the number one guy that I don't like his value right now. So I don't own any shares of him. And I wish I could. I wish Kirk stayed because I thought he would have been like in that Devontae Smith light mold where he's putting up 1,100 yards and scoring 10 touchdowns and he's a top 15 guy. But I don't know about you, but Sam Darnold doesn't knock my socks (laughs) off. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think I would pretty much take all of those second year wide receivers outside of maybe Jordan Reed that you named there. Oh, I would take mm-hmm. flowers. I would take Addison and I would probably, yeah, I'm taking Rashi rice and tank Dell over all, everybody from one eight on, I think. Um, for, really? For, for oh, you person. take them over Thomas and Thomas and worthy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, it's like we said with the quarterbacks, we, that may shift down a hair. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. And maybe some other guys move around. So right now, a yeah. chain is four eleven in our post combine ADP startup value. Um, and Brian Thomas is 5'12. Mm-hmm. Tank Dell is 501, so two spots away from A chain. Um, let's see here. Rashi Rice is 5'4. And then all of those other guys we mentioned, Zay Flowers, JSN, which he'll probably drop because this data doesn't reflect people being upset about Lockett there. Um, and Addison are all uh five five eight five nine five eleven and then rashi rice is five four so all those guys are falling right in line with and brian thomas is the last one in that large blue group mm-hmm. at five twelve and then xavier worthy's three spots underneath him so you're right there and then Jaden reed comes in at 606 mm-hmm. um, so they're all kind of you know yeah. somewhere around each other yeah, they're, they're all close in value and, and i updated my rankings my top 50 recently uh this past day actually and the only 2022 guys I have over and in a different tier than Brian Thomas and worthy is tank down Puka. But right there, it's literally a big tier of just Brian Thomas, Zay flowers, JSN worthy, Rashi rice, George Pickens and DK Metcalf. So it's like, and then Addison's right at the top of the next tier after them. So, I mean, it's like pick and choose, pick your poison, like pick your superhero. But if Thomas goes to the Jags or the Bengals, like I, I see him moving up a tier and being like a, in that T Higgins mold. 
yeah for, uh, for, for landing spot, right like these guys like they all other than jsn they all got phenomenal landing spots in my opinion yeah no a hundred percent the best one got the worst one um <laughs> so no i agree with you i, I like everything you said a chan's pretty close to roma dunze in our in our adp here how about that was is that i'm i'm taking rome still but what do you think I have Rome in a tier with Nico, Smitty, Waddle, T. Higgins, Tank Dell, and Pittman. He's right after like Olave, London, DJ Moore, Ayuk. So it's like I have him as like a, a, a low on wide receiver one, high on wide receiver two, and I'll change like my RB six or seven. So yeah, I think they're pretty even. Yeah. All right. Well, should we wrap this one up? Yeah. All right. We're going to head over and, and go talk about this ranking the one eight at through the one twelve here for your pleasure uh, on the next show. So be sure to like subscribe, comment below. Snoog, let me know where we can find all the content that you're putting out, my man. Yeah. You can just follow me on Twitter at FF Snoog. I have a link tree set up. Everything's in there in my bio. So I'm constantly just working on dynasty stuff, rookie stuff, draft stuff, getting people in leagues, answering DMS all the time just for trade advice and stuff. So, Make sure you guys check out all my stuff there. And I'm going to post out pre post combine post draft. And then another set of rankings for these rookies, probably like right before the season starts. So there's going to be like three more sets. Stay fluid during your process. Always adjust, keep making adjustments, keep, keep dissecting this class. Cause you would be surprised how much you could skim over and be like, wow, I actually do like, Javon Baker instead of Jalen Polk, right? So make sure you just keep watching and keep looking and keep evaluating your process. Yeah, I think that's really, really good advice. Um, I'm always, I always go back a couple of weeks later and and rewatch some guys and relook at some stuff because, yeah. you know, sometimes mood, headspace, you know, sometimes you kind of go in feeling positive about a guy and or negative yeah. about a guy and it, and it can skew, yeah. you, you know, which is why people hate the film thing because it's subjective. Yeah. Well, I could tell you that. I can make analytics pretty fucking subjective too. If, if you give me all the numbers and I could, I yeah. can skew those things too. If I want things to, you know, be a certain yeah. way. Um, exactly. That, that's how I felt about Jane Daniels, right? Like I saw this high upside guy. I'm mean, so excited for him. And I watched the film and I was like, he doesn't throw across the middle of the field. I feel like he's like, allergic to that. And he looks like a Looney Tunes character every time he runs the ball and just like jumps. Oh, when he gets hit too, he looks like a fucking like, Looney Tunes character. But then it's like, Look at the deep ball. Look at the rushing uh, outside. Yeah. Like, and then, and now, I'm, now I have my heart set on him going two to the Commanders. And now I'm starting to like him. Like really, like before I liked him. Like I still think he was a good player. I just wasn't gonna take him over like a Marv or a Neighbors. Like I'd rather just take the elite wide out. That's just how my process is and how I roll in rookie drafts. But now I'm like, the rushing upside is nice. He's gonna go to a good offense, hopefully with the Commanders and Cliff Kingsbury. So it's like I could see myself coming alive with Jane Daniels and being fluid with my process and being like, I actually do like Jane Daniels. I'll take him 103 or 104. Yeah. So stay fluid in your process. It's the best thing you can do. Don't get take lock. <laughs> Kick. You don't want to get take lock, uh, but people, people will accuse you of having take lock if you're still in on JSN and or, or it's just having patience. So those things can go either way. Yeah, um, exactly. But uh, every Tuesday, at Smash Accept is is the show that that you're is the main show that you're always on with uh, Dynasty Daddy. Is that correct? Yeah, Dynasty Dad. Yeah, Dad, I feel I made it way too weird. <laughs> <laughs> he might DM you after. Yeah. This, so be careful. <laughs> All right, man. We appreciate you. We appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next time. Peace. All right.